Hey everybody, welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to show you about the restoring project we're doing on that donated horn. I get uh, most of the dents out with some mandrels and then I get it all sanded up for kind of the final finish that we're going on. Creates quite a bit of dust, so that's why I've got this rig on. Let's just jump right into it. So first things first is between this part and the last one, I did decide to go ahead and improve some of the cosmetics of this horn since I'll already have everything taken apart. And the first thing that I'm gonna get removed is this tuning slide. I grab a shop towel to see if just some pulling will pull it out, which it does. And here you can see that there's not too much buildup on the actual slides, so I didn't have to use more force to get it out. Now I'm deciding how much of the horn I wanna take apart for this project and I decide to remove the bell at this point because it will allow me to sand and improve this finish easier. My small butane torch is out of fuel so I refuel that real quick and then get to heating up on these braces. You can see that I've stuck the trumpet on a wooden mandrel which fits in the throat of the bell and this allows me to turn it and maneuver the bell into position in a much easier way than if I had to use a different method. Because of the damage this horn had, there actually was a pop of the tension when I first unsoldered these braces. So when we put this back together with zero tension, that will improve the playability of the horn. Now I've rotated the horn to get easier access to some of these braces to heat them evenly and just smoothly pop them off with uh, unsoldering. So now that I've removed the valve section, the next part is to just clean up these uh, solder joints that remain and I heat them up and you can only use these q-tips for a couple swipes each before you have to change to the other side or new q-tip. You can see me sometimes using the body of the q-tip to remove some solder that splatters onto the other parts of the bell and this is because it's not actually sticking there it's just uh, layered on top and you can push it off quite easily. This is where I am assessing some of the dents and this cosmetic damage on the bell. I'm also taking a close look at the engraving to see how that is damaged, if at all. And right here is where I decide that I will need to uh, sand this finish off and use some mandrels to get these dents out. This is the first mandrel that I'll be using. It's designed specifically for trumpet bells to be able to reach uh, pretty far down the length of the bell. It is tapered, so the two ends are different sizes, and this end will help us specifically with some of the dents further down there and lift them up. So the first thing I like to do when I get my mandrels out is give them a quick rub with a Scotch-Brite pad and then also spray them with uh, some grease remover and that makes sure that the surface is clean and flat to use on these dents. So the first dent I'm attempting to get out is the large bend that was caused from the brace pushing into the bell uh, tail back here. And I'm being careful to get the mandrel underneath the dent and then gently using a dent hammer to persuade it back into shape. I use both a metal one as well as this Delrin hammer uh, or nylon I think it's actually made of. And this is so that the bell is aligned for the rest of the processes and after this I'll show you how I use sanding to really show me where all the dents are. I can already feel them but they will be very clear when I sand this finish off. I need to switch back to my wooden mandrel here and that will let me rotate this bell into better positions for sanding. The first thing I do is cover up that engraving with some masking tape so that I don't damage uh, the original intention there from the manufacturers. I'll clean this up uh, specifically later. And this is the sanding process that I use the respirator for. I'm using about a 220 grit sandpaper and I didn't remove the lacquer beforehand so all of that grit and even some of the lacquer dust is just getting into the air and I want to protect my lungs uh, for the future. So I've just used this strip and I'm uh, rubbing this back and forth. Longer strokes uh, remove more of the material quicker. So once I need to switch to a new piece of sandpaper, I do that. And this whole process takes quite a long time as I didn't remove the lacquer before and I'm making sure that I get a very clear picture of where the dents are 
which I will show you soon. So as you can see, all of the low spots still have all of the original lacquer and wear from the horn, and that is where the dents are. So using this sanding process really shows you crystal clear where to start your work and get some of these dents out. As I said before, I will be removing most of these dents, but some require other special tools that I don't have at the moment. So now I move my attention to the bell throat and bell flare, just to make sure that I get a clear picture of where those dents are, as well as uh, applying this kind of satin finish that we're going for. Uh, this is kind of the first layer of the scratch pass that we'll be doing. So I take the time to make sure that all of the scratch lines are moving in the same direction. Here I pay special attention to really close to the bell wire because this area is easily overlooked and very kind of a tight spot to get the sandpaper into. So this takes some time to get all of this uh, material, the lacquer, off. But as you can see, the overall finish is much more aesthetically pleasing and this is just the first step of this. It will get better. Next, I'll be removing those dents that you can see in the throat of the bell. And there you can see that the tape is protecting the original engraving well. Now I'll switch back to the steel mandrel, making sure to clean off any of the sanding dust that came along with that process. We don't want this to get underneath any of the dents and create more abrasions inside than we need to. I'm giving everything a wipe down with that shop towel that has some grease remover on it. Here I'm using some regular petroleum jelly. This will ensure that the surfaces are protected from direct contact as well as making them slippery enough as to not scratch them. Uh, I can make sure to get it spread all across the mandrel as I'll be using different sections of the mandrel as we move across different parts of the bell. So I tackle the smaller dents in the bell flare first and I'm just using some light pressure as well as a rocking motion to get these to lift up as I go underneath of them. With these smaller dents they remove pretty quickly and just need a few passes uh, with the rocking motion and the steel compared to the brass will lift them up very easily. But the main thing with dent removal is to be patient as some dents can take up to uh, several minutes to remove properly and ensure that you're not doing additional damage to the bell. Here I'm working on a dent that I decide needs some light persuasion with this nylon hammer and I'm just tapping right in the center of the dent against the steel mandrel and this will help lift the dent uh, higher. Some technicians and players don't believe in removing small dents from the bell because of the work hardening that goes on when you do that. Um, it's up for debate whether or not people can truly hear these tonal characteristics between returning to the original shape compared to the slight, slightly more hard material in these spots, but it is interesting to uh, consider. To tackle some of these larger dents uh, next to where the brace will be going, I pick up a straight burnisher that I got from Vota Tool, and I apply some petroleum jelly to that again to protect uh, the brass and the steel from uh, damaging each other. Again, I'm not using very much pressure here, but I'm just passing over some of these dents, making sure that there is contact between the steel and the brass underneath, and this pressure persuades the brass to lift up to the original contour of the bell. This definitely isn't the perfect combination of tools for these particular dents, but I'm working with the tools that I currently have. A better tool would be a dent ball driver and uh, the nylon hammer, or a smaller nylon hammer, just to lift them to the original shape. One of the issues that can happen with this combination is getting larger flat spots than originally intended, and that's actually some of what I'm correcting right here with this nylon hammer. As well as what I'm doing when I'm moving this bell back and forth, I'm lifting some of the areas of the flat spots that I created uh, on the center point of those dents. I'm using the sandpaper in between to check how much progress I've made on the dents uh, and it lets me guide myself to completing the dent. So I clean this up one more time with the shop towel and some degreaser. 
These dents are about as well removed as I can get with my current tooling, so hopefully I can get some more tooling to better remove these dents and some future dents on more projects. As you can see, the surface finish isn't completely uniform, as well as some of those dents still being a little bit present, but the overall look of this bell has been improved quite a bit. Now I'll remove the dents in the bell tail and I grab a mandrel that is originally intended for lead pipes. Uh, I won't be able to reach very much of the dents in the bell tail, but I will be able to get one of them out, so I decided to do it. I used this mandrel the first time around just because I was in mandrel mode, but upon editing I actually remembered I do have the slide expander that would fit into this bell tail quite easily, and you've seen me use that trick on this channel before but I use a combination of the flat burnisher and a dent hammer to remove this smaller dent. Now I'll switch back to the wooden mandrel, which will again let me reposition the bell very easily. And I make the surface finish uniform by using a Scotch-Brite pad, uh, kind of moving in the same motion across the entire bell, which is a combination of a circular motion with my wrist as well as a linear motion that I'm pushing towards the front of the bell flare. The bell flare needs special attention uh, just because of its shape you can't push in the same direction otherwise the scratch lines will not be as uniform as all of the other ones across the bell. Here you can see the new aesthetics of the bell. We got here by using the 220 sandpaper and then really clouding up the surface with a scotch bright pad and as you can see it lends itself to a quite uniform finish. Well there we have it. That's how I got most of the dents out of the bell with the mandrels that I was using. And then I brushed it up with a Scotch-Brite finish. And I'm debating on whether or not to keep it as that rough finish or polish it up with the buffing wheel. Let me know down in the comments what you think. In the meantime, if you want to know when I post more videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thanks for stopping by the shop.